to Kathleen's dining room. <laughs> now, if you want to know why I'm in my dining room, it's because I like to live dangerously. I'm going to do a quick little ditty for you on varnishing because several people have asked me to do that. Now, I usually do this downstairs in my, uh, my wonderful little uh, studio, the no bra zone, but it's cold as a witch's booby out here today, guys. It's like 47 degrees and I, I'm not used to that and it's cold as can be downstairs and uh, because it's so cold, we're not out and about running around doing things we're inside and uh, I needed something to do. So I figured by request, I would uh, do a quick little video on how I varnish and what works best for me. Now, um, it's what works best for me. And I've learned these things, believe me you, from trial and error. I have messed up quite a few paintings along the way, but fortunately it was earlier in my painting journey and um, I look back on them now and I, I probably would have painted over them um, regardless. So I'm going to varnish um, a little painting I did uh, about three or four weeks ago. I wait a long time before I varnish my paintings. You know, you you read information about that. Some say you can do it in seven days. Some say wait a couple of weeks. I wait at least a couple of weeks just to be safe, especially if it's something that I'm, I'm fond of. So um, I wanted to talk about a couple of different things that I have learned along the way. The most important thing that I learned is Alation Coat. This is a product by Golden. And so many people, I, I, I posted a piece of my art with um, a list of everything I did to that painting while I was varnishing it. And the first thing was I apply my isolation coat. And I probably got about 50 people asking me, well, what the heck's an isolation coat? Well, I'm gonna tell you what it is, but I'm also gonna give you the best advice that was ever given to me. If you have a question like that, by all means, reach out. I don't care if a hundred of you reach out, I'll do my best to answer each and every one of you. But go to the source, Google it, find out. I immediately went to the Golden website and I Googled isolation coat. What's it for? What does it do? They even provided a video that tells you how to apply it. So isolation coat, guys. Golden website, definition. An isolation coat is a clear, non-removable coating that serves to physically separate the paint surface from the, removable, from the removable varnish. The isolation coat serves two purposes. Number one, to protect the painting if or when the varnish is removed by separating the pigment areas of the painting from the solvents used in removal. Number two, to seal and to seal any absorbent area in order to create an even surface on which to apply your varnish. Go to the source. This is the best product in the world. It not only protects your painting if you ever need to remove your varnish because you can screw varnish up sometimes. I've done it many a times. And it seems like every time I've sold a painting, I've screwed up my varnish. Um, luck be a lady. Um, and you can remove your varnish and still protect your painting. It also keeps your varnish from soaking into the pores of your canvas um, and keeps the varnish nice and smooth on top. Now I'm gonna show you an example. This is my most favorite painting that I have done in the past couple of months. And this one sold immediately. And I reached out to the sweet lady who bought it to find out what kind of, what kind of surface would she like? Does she want me to varnish it? Does she want me to um, 
have a satin finish? Does she want me to do a high gloss? I give people that option. And she wanted a satin finish, which I'm all about. I prefer it personally over a high gloss um, varnish. And I put the isolation coat down and then it was when it started to get cold and then I put my Liquitex varnish on top of it and it was too cold in the basement and the next morning when I went down it was just all crusty and gooby and gross and I spent a week removing the varnish off of it um, only because I wanted every inch of it gone. I wanted to make sure that this lady was happy and I had to start over again. Now, how do you remove varnish? Google it, but the best way to remove it is to apply mineral spirits to a soft lint-free lint cloth, soak it down, wring it out, lay it on top of your painting, and then I applied a plastic on top of that, waited about uh, five to seven minutes, pulled it off, wiped, did it over and over again. It took me a long time to remove the varnish. So isolation coats, they're very, very, very important. What else is important? What varnishes do I use? Well, I've tried many. I recently tried on the wooden spoon piece, um, the sample board that I was doing, I tried this um, Fusions Mineral Paint Pouring Resin. And I put one coat down on the wood after it had dried, of course, and it did beautifully. And then I tried it again on this canvas and it did okay. It's very similar to applying um, art resin. Um, I hope that you can see this has a really nice shine, but I can see some, um, lines in it and it's a self-leveling resin so I don't understand why the lines are here so I'm not ready to give up on this stuff but um, it did beautifully on the wood it did okay on my canvas um, my preference is a satin finish I love a satin finish over a high gloss to me the gloss the light hits it it takes your eye away from the colors and the composition some people love it and that's totally okay. Um, this is an example of, oh, <laughs> saved. This is an example of the satin varnish and I absolutely love it. It has a little bit of a sheen to it when the light hits it, but it, uh, I just think it's just so soft and so silky. So that is my preference, and I'm going to tell you about applying satin varnish because I, I learned that the hard way. This is the gloss varnish, and for this painting, I think the gloss is absolutely perfect. So there you have it. There's also a matte varnish, which I have never used only because I saw someone else use it once and I paint with a lot of dark black colors a lot and I thought that it made the black look uh, very too muted for me. So that's where we're at. Let's talk about satin varnish. I learned this the hard way. Um, I did a painting. I didn't put down my isolation coat because I hadn't discovered that yet and I thought, you know, hey, people say three, four coats of varnish, and I put um, three coats of satin varnish down, and my painted painting got very, very dull. So, if you're going to be using a satin varnish, my, my thought to you is this. You do your isolation coat first, always, you put down your gloss varnish after your isolation coat has dried, which usually takes some, um, they recommend 24 to 48 hours. Then you put your gloss varnish down, you let that dry, and then you put your satin varnish down. Satin varnish looks best on top of a gloss varnish, for me, rather than multiple 
coats of the satin varnish which I feel dull your painting. So, important things. If you forget, go to the source. Golden has fantastic videos, lots of really good information. You can actually even reach out and give them a call if you have questions about things. Something else I wanted to mention to you. If you're ever sending or shipping your paintings out, um, before my man Rick started making all of my frames, which I'm so grateful for, um, I ordered my frames uh, from Jerry's Artorama, and they um, have really nice floating frames for canvases. This was one of them. It's called the Illusion Series. I think Karen Durson from Waterfall Acrylics um, recommended them to me. Now, when you get your paintings or your canvases in the mail, they ship them very nicely packed so they're not damaged. And they have these little square wooden cardboard corners on them. I save them. I save them. And when it's time for me to ship off a painting to a customer or a loved one, I use them on the corners to protect them. So hang on to things. They might come in handy, guys. All right, let's get busy on this canvas. The first thing you want to do always, oh, let's talk about our brushes, something I find that's really important. There are so many brushes, expensive brushes with special animal hairs, inexpensive brushes, um, which are usually synthetic. Now, I hope you can see this, but do you see how thick this brush is compared to this brush? This is an expensive brush. I don't use it for two reasons. Why spend all the money? Because after about three or four varnishings, I usually throw my brush away, so that can get expensive. Also, if it's a thick brush, it tends to hold on to too much varnish and it takes too much varnish off. So thick brushes for me are a no-no. Once again, guys, this is how I do it. This is how I found the best way for me. Inexpensive thinsetic brushes. I don't ever use the spun brushes because I find that the spongy brushes, um, the little square spongy things with the stick in it, I find that they tend to spread a lot of air bubbles. So I don't use them. They don't work for me. They work for others. I use an inexpensive synthetic thin brush that's very, very flexible. It has to be soft. It can't be a, a hard bristle brush um, because that will make lines. So let's put that aside. Now, this is the size I'm going to use today. A very inexpensive, flexible, synthetic brush is what we're going to use. And we're going to go ahead and put down first our gloss varnish and um, then I'll come back to this. I'm going to have a, a satin varnish when I'm done with this painting, but I'm going to put my um, gloss varnish down first and then when that dries, um, they say you can varnish after about, I think, five or six hours. Um, I usually wait a whole day and then I'm going to come back in with the satin varnish to finish it up. So isolation coat is down. We're going to do our gloss varnish and then when that dries I'm going to come back with my satin varnish. So I feel like I've got diarrhea of the mouth here guys. Let me go ahead and get everything I need. And then we will rock and roll. Okay, I just squeeze a little bit out and what I do guys is I take a look at the way my brush lines are going in my painting or the, the paint lines and then my first coat of varnish is applied the opposite way. 
So a lot of my lines are going this way. So my first coat of varnish is going to go this way, which means where I'm going to start, I put a little extra varnish kind of up there at the top because that's where I'm going to start my paintbrush and I don't want my paintbrush to go across the canvas dry. Then I do my sides, or close to the edge, excuse me, and then I put a little bit kind of down in the middle. Clean your canvas first. I don't know if we talked about that. Um, I already did. I go over it with a soft white, white cloth, and then I go in with the fat brush, the expensive fat brush, and I dust it off to make sure there's no boinkers or anything floating around in it. I lay my brush down into the paint. Now, I do not take it off either edge until my second swipe. So the first swipe, I start at the edge and I'm just lightly, just lightly, guys, bringing it down to the other end. And I do not go over the edge yet. I overlap my brush marks. So what I'm doing right now is basically just kind of spreading my varnish out to make sure that I have enough on my canvas. And guys, ever so lightly, stop before the end and start, and start before the upper edge of the canvas. And I always <laughs> have to remind myself to breathe when I'm doing this. It's like when I'm doing a cloud pour, I swear I don't breathe until I get that last drop of paint out of the cup. Why is that? Now my last swipe here goes over the edge. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to start back over where I started, but I'm going to start over the edge. The reason I'm doing that is my brush has a good amount of varnish on it because I applied very little pressure and I did not go over the edges. Now I need to get rid of some of this varnish. So I start over the edge and ever so lightly. It's like tickling, tickling somebody's back. And take it over that edge to get rid of the excess varnish. And then I pass my brush around the canvas so I don't get any drips. Over the edge pass around the canvas, overlap every time you go across. By taking my brush over the side of the canvas, it's also cleaning the excess varnish off of my brush. ever so lightly. I can't say that enough. Do not push your brush down into the canvas. I'm just lightly dragging it. Last swipe, take it over that edge. Now I'm gonna go one more time. I only do three. Every time I do four, it starts to get tacky, which means your varnish has started to dry. I don't 
don't know if you can hear, but my man is upstairs playing his guitar. I love him so. He used to be a professional musician, but he played trumpet. And he picked up guitar a few years ago, and I love it when he's upstairs strumming away. Okay, I'm going to go back right through here because I see a little extra varnish there and one more time right here. Okay, so we are done with the top. Coat number one. I'll do coat number two off camera later on tomorrow. But remember how we let it run off the edge on this side and this side? That means almost no varnish ran off on this side or this side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the varnish that's on my brush on the two sides that got none of the overflow. Just a real quick light ditty. We'll do this side. The sides are important too, guys. It's part of your painting. Okay, now we're going to address the sides that have a good amount of varnish on them because of the roll off. Now, before you leave this side, I take my brush and I pass it under the bottom side of the canvas because there's drips there and they're a pain in the butt to get off once they've dried. Take those drips and use them over here. Run the brush under the underside of the canvas to get rid of those drips. Let me do this side and then let me do this side. Now another thing, I support my cup, my painting with um, these little cups. When you do, make sure that your cups are kind of inside the bottom portion. Um, that way you don't have to avoid them when you're brushing the sides and also none of the drips fall into the top of the cup, which makes it very, very difficult to take off. So. This little cup that's underneath here, guys, make sure it's kind of out of the flow of the drips. And there we have it. If I see a few air bubbles, usually I have a little uh, flashlight close by and I look, but I've got good light above me and good light coming through the, the window. Um, I give it a little bit of a tap just a quick little tiny tap to help get rid of all the air bubbles. Now, when it's all said and done, I gotta be careful here because I got one drying underneath this. This is the little thing, the little ditty that I ordered off of Amazon. It's called Pickens and um, comes in really handy. I cover the painting to keep any little dust particles and foster mojo bean hairs out of it and all that kind of good stuff. So there you have it. I let it dry for a day. Then I come back the following day and I apply my second coat. Now when I do my second coat, I usually go in the opposite direction that I did it uh, uh, the first coat in. We went this way with our brush. When I come in with my second coat, I'm going to go this way with my brush. That helps eliminate uh, the possibility of any uh, uh, brush strokes in your painting. So I think that did it, guys. I think we covered everything. Um, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a professional painter with a college degree. I do it this way because I learn from my mistakes and this works for me. So I am wishing you guys a happy day of painting. And if there are any questions you have that I didn't answer, just reach on out to me like always. I'll miss you guys till I see you again. Have a great day.
Bye now. Thank you.